What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we are taking a look at the endgame PvE guide for Awakening Megu. She's been out for just a little bit now, so we've had some time to kind of break down how she works. So we're going to go through different sets to run and skill rotation that we're using along with the add-ons uh, so we can get her full potential unleashed. She's actually insanely strong in PvE. She just takes a little bit more uh, setup and practice uh, than some of the more recent classes uh, or specs of those classes rather that were released, uh, but she can actually perform trash loot wise just the same with a little bit more effort. Uh, so really, really impressed with how she plays. And with that covered, first thing we're going to jump into take a look at is going to be our lightstone setups. Before we jump into the rest of the guide, did want to quickly mention that Pearl Abyss has graciously hooked me up with a uh, little bit of a promo where uh, if you are purchasing pearls, or rather the A coin to then purchase the pearls, you're not on the Steam client, you're using the regular web client uh, version, you can enter a creator content code, mine is NTW, and a percentage of that purchase of pearls will go to me rather than Pearl Abyss, uh, so it helps your boy out. If you're already thinking about buying the pearls, maybe consider dropping that code in NTW for me uh, as just a way to say thanks for you know guides or whatever or just looking good on stream whatever the case may be i would greatly appreciate it again code ntw when you're purchasing pearls on the web client service thank you so talking about our lightstone options for awaken megu uh first is going to be our best in slot uh, and then the next one that's almost best in slot for it and that of course is going to be death blow um, now i know you might be saying she doesn't seem at surface level like it's a death blow class because of that critical hit chance skill that she has in Fox Flare Fletch, um, that extra uh, critical hit boost that she gets, and it can have and does end up having a 100% uptime on it. It doesn't quite get all of our skills up to par with it alongside um, our Tier 3 add-on, of which we have one accessible in the Awakening Kit. Um, the other would need to go to Pre-Awakening, which you'll see later we're not going to do, uh, in order to guarantee that all of our hits are hitting 100% critical hit rate. The thing is, we do not have 100% uptime on that Tier 3 add-on, which means there are going to be many moments when that's on cooldown for 12 seconds with a, a buff of 10 seconds. There's many, in, um, many instances that we are going to... Uh, be on a tier two add-on of critical hit rate and we want to ensure that all of our skills are hitting 100 percent uh, critical hit rate at all times making death blow the best in slot for that answer now your next option uh, is of no surprise to anyone vicious shadows is still really really strong if you don't have death blow because maybe you already play a class that is running vicious shadows is best in slot its crit hit rate is already maxed or whatever the reason may be vicious shadows is very strong um, potentially better than uh, death blow in instances where you have a lot of back attacks going like gyphon underground for instance um, you'll see it pale in comparison a little bit more at hex is where it's going to make a bigger impact to have death blow because of the back attacks there aren't super favorable with vicious shadows uh, the way that the mobs are moving and you kind of have waves of packs going in from time to time if you don't have either of those or you don't uh, quite have the funds to invest in them as uh, both the shadows and strike stones are expensive and the double blades you'll need for death blow can be really expensive there's some other budget options that you can run with depending on where you're grinding between trolls hex or gyphon underground you could be running uh, the wilds either demi human or comma sylvia damage comma sylvia being for gyphon demi human being for trolls since these supersede ap caps these are really really handy once you're already hitting the ap cap stacking uh, these on top to kind of work over that cap and get some extra damage um, as a pretty decent budget uh, option alternative to our more powerful ones uh, these are still really really strong and totally fine to use there you will find that you're not going to be able to do that at a grind spot like hex since the subtype for the mobs there is actually animal or beast uh, depending on the translation you use and they don't have a wilds variation and you don't want to use the wilds that's just flat ap because those do not supersede ap caps and you're going to end up just kind of restricting yourself hitting the ap cap and then running that set so in those scenarios um, you can maybe find some space for something else trained fists or enhanced focus are very budget friendly options since the stones are completely obtainable off market for virtually nothing on it uh, if you need the more ap trained fist is a great option if the accuracy is going to help you hit max hit rate on all of your skills which megu may struggle with uh, depending on your gear setup a bit then the enhanced focus is really really nice an extra 24 accuracy does give you a little bit of ap bonus on there and the stamina is not nothing but it's not like you're running out of stamina um, in pve at these end game zones we're talking about possibly at hex depending on how many rotations you're managing at a time and a really good other option that i'll mention is likely better than train fist or enhanced focus going to be target openings this one having the critical damage plus six percent is very very nice with it and then of course we still get some accuracy and ap this is a pretty strong alternative to vicious shadows for especially hex 
since the back attack is not as relevant there, you're don't get me wrong, you're still getting back attacks, but not nearly as frequently uh, as our other two zones we're covering in Gyph and Underground and the Trolls. The only thing I'll mention about this one is, in my opinion, if you already have the Strike Stone for it, which is uh, a little more difficult to obtain than the Shadow Stone, you might as well just go ahead and grab the Shadow Stone and rather, rather than running this set for it, uh, just go ahead and pick up Vicious Shadows as a whole and be a little bit better off for your overall uh, Lightstone kit. So... There you have it for those sets. As far as artifacts to run, um, you, it's going to be kind of straightforward. If you need the additional monster AP, then you're going to want to run monster AP uh, artifacts for these sets. If you need the accuracy, which might be the case again, as uh, Awaken Megu does struggle a little bit with accuracy for PvE if your gear is a little bit under, uh, you can definitely run those, and it's highly recommended since you want to have 100% hit rate. Uh, and if you have both of those things covered, which is ideal, um, then you can go with some Black Spirit Rage artifacts to help you get an extra 20% uh, Black spirit rage uh, on your kit throw one of these sets in there uh, that's going to help you get your um, z buff up 100 percent of the time or in her case she can actually use her black spirit rage without any detriment grinding any of these zones uh, so that's an option for you to get some extra bsr on there and really handy to have in instances where you have exceeded the ap cap and you have max hit rate so you don't need the accuracy either so with that covered let's jump into the crystals and take a look all right, getting into uh, crystal combinations, if you've seen any of my other recent PvE guides for other classes, uh, these will look pretty similar to you because they are the same. So we've got three different sets we're going to take a look at, talk about just a little bit. So the first one's going to be what we'll call our general PvE set. This set is for the player that doesn't want to care about what our hit rate is or AP caps or anything like that. You don't want to be bothered worrying about this stuff. You just want to throw on a set that's going to be good enough. Uh, to go anywhere it's going to guarantee that you have hit rate in the type of spots we're talking about like gyphon underground which is not very restrictive uh, uh accuracy wise however hex and trolls are uh, so this covers that by having both l cars and vipers for most classes that's probably more accuracy than you need but again we want to cover all our bases here so that you don't have to calculate anything from there, we just kind of maximize uh, AP to a certain extent. Um, I've had other people bring up several times about running Maclods in this set. I just want to caution you uh, of, of doing that overall. Um, you may not hit your accuracy rate. And again, this set is designed for the player that doesn't want to have to calculate these things. So it guarantees things like maximum critical hit rate, maximum hit rate, and then some AP to fill in the gaps uh, and damage rather um, outside of that without having to really calculate anything without having to run spirit perfumes for masks crit without worrying too much um, about let's say if you don't have the costume slot you want to run crit drop a uh, red fang valor these are all things you do when you're calculating your amounts and this set is not designed for that uh, now when we do want to get into calculating things and we are concerned about ap caps we're going to look at what we'll call our try hard set so this set is again uh, designed for someone that does know what their hit rate is so that they've got it calculated out. So if I run this set at Hex, for instance, if I'm on Megu, I need just the one Viper. If I happen to be on my DK, which is my main is the Megu's tagged, I actually don't need that Viper uh, that you see in the crystal set for it there. So this is just an example of you kind of need to know what your hit rate is uh, against the mobs that you're grinding against, particularly when we're talking about uh, Calpheon Elvia, the bosses actually have a different hit rate. It's much higher than even the mobs there. Um, so you'd want to kind of pay attention to that, make sure you're not missing uh, your attacks at all, not even just on key skills, but you shouldn't be hitting, uh, not hitting, rather, getting any misses on any setups. Now, uh, in this, we're running Ultimate Hooms, uh, number one, because the defensive gains of these guys are absolutely insane. You can run Macalods, um, however, that would not be great at Trolls or Hex, where you're dealing with a 5% AP cap, and depending on your gear, you're likely going to be exceeding that AP cap very easily with other buffs that you're running. Uh, so a 5% AP cap getting an extra 22 AP off of Maclod is literally going to give you one AP <laughs> worth of benefit um, and picking up one AP instead of like 600 HP and a, a gajillion um, DR and actually a little bit of accuracy as well a little bit more than the Maclods even provide uh, is going to be much more beneficial to your grind state than just running the Maclods can you run them sure but again AP caps are a thing um, for Gyphon, we have a separate crystal set that we'll look at in just a minute for that. Before that last piece, the other part I want to mention, you don't necessarily have to run the Swiftness Crystal. This set, uh, set up, again, is designed so that you have max movement speed as your skills are dictated by that, particularly your iframe skills on Megu. Um, so we do want max movement speed if you can get it. Is running for max movement speed fine? Like, yeah, it is. You could do that. Um, if you wanted to, you can also run spirit perfume elixirs to get maximum critical hit rate and you don't necessarily have to have the dark red fangs or if you want to drop one um, and then run the critical hit uh, costume 
slot or you just don't have the costume slot. Uh, you can definitely do these things and kind of mix and match. The design here was you're not having to run things like Spirit Perfume um, constantly and you're also um, going to maintain that max critical hit rate while running a Frenzy Draft and movement speed as well if you can. So that's that's the design on that, just throwing that out there before anyone mentions uh, things about other options with that. Last set that we're going to talk about is the Gyphon set, and we're going to pretend those Macalods are the ultimate version. I haven't bothered making my Crystal of Harmonies that are extra out of the, other than the Hooms uh, into Macalods, uh, just because I haven't gotten around to because I honestly haven't grinded Gyphon that much in general. So you do want to run the ultimate Macalods here, and the reason in this scenario why that's beneficial for Gyphon is the AP cap's only 70%. So when it's extremely restrictive in Elvia, you get virtually no AP for going over the cap. Number one, the cap is much lower at Gyphon, and number two, at a 70% restriction, picking up 22 AP is actually going to give you a little under 15 AP worth of usage as opposed to the one-ish AP you get at the two Elvia zones we've mentioned. Um, and then you'll see we do swap out the Corrupted Crystals for Crystal of Mysterious Darkness. These providing 12% back attack each on them is extremely powerful at Gyphon because when you're grinding there uh, properly, then uh, you will be getting all back attacks at all points in time, and they do supersede the damage that Corrupted Crystals would be dealing. Um, this can also be even more impactful in a scenario where, for whatever reason, you've decided to change the setup and not have critical hit rate maxed out at all times. Um, if that is a scenario, uh, you'll also see the scale going towards back attack, especially at Gyphon in, in general. We have just the one uh, Dark Red Fang uh, crystal so that we're going to actually be using Giant's Draft here. We'll, we'll maintain a max crit. Uh, that way as it performs pretty similar to Frenzy Draft since, again, we're getting 100% back attack when we're grinding at Gyphon. Crystal of Brutal Decimation, pretty straightforward. That back attack, extra monster damage, both apply at Gyphon. So I don't really need to explain what we're doing there. Rebellious Crystal, obviously, in every single set for PvE because it's just insanely good. I've even seen some uses in PvP because the stats are just absurd. Uh, and then on all of these, we are using the Gearance Crystal as it's the best in slot primordial crystal uh, across the board. I don't have a tier just yet. Hopefully this week I'm just a little bit short. Uh, if I get like two fragments or one crystal out of my bundles this week, then I should have the Gearance tier, which will be nice. So obviously if you have that, you want to go ahead and upgrade to the tier. So there you have our crystal setups. Uh, let's go ahead and get into skill add-ons and see how everything's going to tie in with the rotation afterwards. Here are our skill add-ons, and before we go into talking about a few of these, I just want to point out something I always mention in these guides is that your skill add-ons and your skill rotation should work hand-in-hand -hand with each other. That is to say that your add-ons are mapped out in a way that they're not overlapping or overwriting in some cases and not getting a benefit um, based on what skills you're using in your skill rotation. So if you take these and want to modify them a bit, then make sure that lines up with the skill rotation as well, and vice versa. If you take the skill rotation and then kind of change it around to what feels nice for you, you may want to look at the skill add-ons and adjust them accordingly. You don't want to be doing things like running a a tier three add-on and then you have a refresh for a tier two uh, a little bit later in the skill rotation but it won't overwrite the tier three and so the last two seconds of the tier three go you use your tier two skill and now you don't have any add-on for the next uh, four or five seconds whatever your your cooldown on that setup is um, so you don't want to run into things like that just make sure you kind of pay attention uh, to each one. Um, so as far as these add-ons go, fairly straightforward with what we're trying to do. As with most classes, our most important PvE uh, segments are going to be our critical hit rate, unless you're on a class that is 100% on everything. This one does not. Um, then your attack speed, of course, and then your extra AP against monsters, which might be variable based on where you're grinding and your AP caps. So in this setup, we are awakening only stance. We don't want to go into our pre-awakening which I'll explain quite a bit in our skill rotation section. Uh, so that gives us access to just one tier three add-on. Uh, for our Megu, that critical hit rate is extremely important for us. We definitely want to have that 30% there. And then we do run attack speed plus 10% as well. You could potentially be running extra AP against monsters plus 30 here if you need it. I caution you to pay attention to your AP caps, especially once again, hex and trolls that are 5% AP caps because you're likely superseding that. I would also argue that if you're only 10 AP away from hitting the cap and you need the tier three, there's a lot of other ways to pick that up. Even just running like a perfume of courage or something. Um, 
so that you can hit max it would be a little bit more advisable than sacrificing the two slots for the tier three add-ons that we have that twirling fox flare then has the tier two critical hit rate it's going to pick up the gaps where uh, our ember claw finale is on cooldown as it has a 12 second cooldown and you can see these are only going to be lasting for seven seconds for the buff so there's going to be a five second variable where we don't have those tier threes so we kind of just need to be filling in the the gaps here fox flare stroke as you'll see in the rotation um, is used very frequently uh, it has a critical hit rate buff on or excuse me AP uh, buff on the skill itself uh, so this gets a whole lot of uptime and therefore we get our back attack and critical hit damage just kind of applied as needed Fo same with Fox flare ambush uh, both critical hit rate and attack casting speed to fill in gaps as you'll see we use this skill for repositioning uh, several times as well Fox flare fletch getting our only AP plus 20 uh, on monsters here and this is our critical hit rate uh, buffing skill which is really really nice I also have accuracy rate on that one since this one also gets applied very very often and then you'll see the uh, the debuff ones here and we put this on ember claw slash um, this is for two reasons one this has a nice semi lengthy frontal guard two hit attack uh, and a two it's also very very wide something to point out when we're talking about debuffs versus buffs for our skill add-ons is the debuffs have to actually hit the mobs in order to apply so we want that DP debuff to actually hit all of the mobs whereas if we're talking about an AP buff like the extra monsters for us we only need to hit any one mob with this skill we'll get our accuracy rate and our AP buff applied to ourselves however if we want that DP debuff and evasion uh, debuff applied to the monsters you need to hit all of them so we want to put this on a skill uh, with a decent cooldown uh, and it's very very broad the actual animation itself uh, so that you can actually hit all the mobs very very easily looks like this really wide um, it's got two hit effects there so really nice to apply onto the mobs um, this particularly applies to hex since you kind of have waves of mobs coming at you whereas guy controls is much more stationary so they're much easier to make sure you're hitting all of the packs so that's definitely going to help us out uh, in applying our damage so with the add-ons covered let's go ahead and get into the rotation and tie everything together so for Awakening Megu's skill rotation, it's going to be a little bit different than in most skill rotations. Uh, this class really benefits more so of like skill cooldown priority. Uh, I have gone ahead and created uh, these setups so that you can use it from top to bottom, rinse and repeat, and all of your cooldowns will be up. But as you get more comfortable with the class, this even more so than others is really going to benefit from, hey, this particular school skill is off of cooldown. I'm going to use that now rather than one, two, three, four, five down the list. Um, you can definitely use this to start with. It does perform extremely well um, with really good results but uh, this one does benefit a lot more from that skill cooldown priority uh, so on the left hand side we've got all of the skills uh, listed with their skill names and the icons and then if you want the skill inputs playing on pc we have that listed for you on the right hand side and this uh, setup is crafted so that you're always in awakening stance for two reasons one uh, because it feels nice when you're playing an awakening class and it only needs to use the awakening stance and two, because the class is truly designed that way, you have your Spirit Forge stance, which increases the uh, abilities of most of your Awakening Kit skills. Um, so you can see, for instance, if we look at Twirling Rhapsody, when you're in the Spirit Forge stance, it has an additional attack on it, and the in, the increased attack area uh, is applied as well. So it actually has a much larger AOE. You may have heard some people complaining about AOE size on the Awaken Megu itself. Most of this is due to not maintaining a Spirit Forge stance properly. Um, a big one that's used is the Shift Death or Twirling Fox Flare skill, as it has a very low cooldown at only six seconds. Uh, it gets used very frequently. It also pairs really well with your Fox Flare Ambush, which is your teleport repositioning skill. Uh, that'll put you behind uh, the mobs as well. Um, and it has an additional... Uh, it has additional effects as well in the Spirit Forge stench. It's a little bit faster and the AOE size is also increased. So it's really important we keep that Spirit Forge stance maintained at all times. The other thing to note is sometimes that stance is actually uh, confused with the critical hit damage uh, buff that she has uh, and it's actually not the same thing so the megu in general has this passive twirling crane when you combo into the skills mentioned below while using the spirit forge stance into fox fire whatever whatever you get critical hit damage plus two percent five percent and ten percent in the following situations for those so using those skills in spirit forge stance will apply the critical hit damage buff but just because you have it on does not mean that you are still in your spirit forge stance uh, you can actually get taken out of it fairly easily so if we have it here and then i use just a side dash and then i do twirling fox flare which normally uh, this should actually apply an additional um 
tier, but you can see the critical hit damage is still at tier one after having done that. That is because when I side dashed using chain spirit step, uh, that takes us out of our spirit forge stance. Now, currently in game, there is no indicator of when you're in or out of spirit forge stance. I fully expect that to change as megu has been out for a while. In fact, I put off making this guide for a while, um, predicting there would be some sort of changes, especially with some sort of indicator for this stance. But as it turns out, there's not yet. <laughs> I still expect there probably will be at some point since classes like Awaken Draconia that deal with multiple stances uh, had one implemented very quickly. Um, so I do expect that to be the case. But until then, you just kind of need to be comfortable with it. And you're just going to be able to use this rotation to uh, kind of map out what you're doing and maintain that Spirit Forge stance. Doing things like, as we mentioned, like the side dash is going to take you out. And also, to note, going into your pre-awakened stance will take you out of Spirit Forge uh, as well. So we don't want to do these things. We want to maintain all of our extra effects so that we are getting maximum damage uh, with our Megu and that we are able to maximize the rotation uh, damage output and keep our skill add-ons nice, nice and sharp so we stay out of pre-awakened uh, for that effect. Um, other things to note is that you're twirling Rhapsody. If you do that twice in a row, this will also take you out of it. However, you can twirling Rhapsody as you'll see in, in the combination of skills and then you can uh, throw it just an RMB in there since it's a really nice skill just in general and this will maintain it for you so you don't have to worry about getting dropped out. You can also at any time use your F um, Floxfire Ambush if you're on console uh, and that will get you back into your Spirit Forge stance and notably you can't spam that skill. When you press F you'll see that as I'm just spamming it right now, you don't teleport right away. You can actually circumvent this by jumping and then pressing your basic attack or left mouse button for PC players. And you can actually spam it this way without any issues. So if for some reason you needed to dodge a skill effect uh, or something of that nature or an exploding skeleton or something that's in your way, uh, you could just go ahead and do this and get right back into your Spirit Forge stance instantly. It's a great teleport. It'll target the mob and actually put you there. It has insane range on top of it. And I've also noticed that just using the jump and then click button uh, is a little bit better targeting wise. When you do the F, it seems to have a kind of weird targeting a little bit. It makes you slide a little further than I'd like to. If you're comfortable with it, you can go either way, but this is just what I prefer and keeps our Spirit Forge state up at all times. You can see the crit buff goes to the tier three after we've done this three times in a row. And that is because it applies a level of that critical hit damage buff every time that you're still in Spirit Forge state. And it just tells you you're constantly triggering Spirit Forge state every time you do that. So now that we got that out of the way, let's actually talk about the rotation itself and just kind of going through them. Very simple startup's gonna be um, our Fox Flare Fletch into Hazy Path into Fox Flare Stroke. This is going to get us both add-ons and our pre-buff skills that we need, our critical hit uh, rate on it, and also our AP buff so that we have both of those applied as we go ahead and actually like start our combo from that point. From there, obviously we're just gonna go ahead and use our big guy and this is our tier three add-on. So this continues uh, adding on our pre-buffs, if you will. It's also a very good attack just in general. And when you're using it, you can actually hold down Q if you're on PC, not sure what the input is for console, but you can use an additional attack there by pressing that, which is fast, good damage. Note that that piece is uh, indeed unprotected. Uh, from there, we're gonna go ahead and use our twirling Fox Flare which does have Frontal Guard into Super Armor, which is nice. Damage is pretty decent. And since we're in Spirit Forge when we're doing this, we have the faster version and it is a wider AOE. And the same will apply with our Ember Claw Slash, which is protected as well. And then uh, the next one is going to be our Ember Claw Torrent. This one to note, if you do it outright, right after your Ember Claw Slash, it has a very nice three skill effect. So it's all Frontal Guard and good damage at that with a wide range. However, if you use it directly after uh, your Fox Flare Ambush because you needed to reposition, you're only going to get the third hit of it. So I just wanna keep that in mind for everyone. If you do need to reposition, uh, just be ready for that. You're only going to get just that last hit. You won't be able to get all three of those hits in there. So also the frontal guard is much shorter. Keep that in mind if something's exploding uh, or a flame and a Gyphon's about to hit you, it'll be a way shorter uh, frontal guard. So kind of be prepared for that. And then the last skill um, I'm not super, super fond of, but this helps kind of tie in the rotation to make it seamless. Um, we're just going to go ahead and use our uh, Ember Claw Crush. Um, and this skill is okay. It's unprotected. The damage is fine with it, but I'm not super in love with it because of the animation speed um, for the damage that we're dealing. However, because we wanted to try and run a seamless rotation, we do need it to ensure that we're going to have uh, our big guy, the tier three Ember Claw finale with the flow back up and available. So it's kind of important to do that. 
Uh, after that, you just can use Twirling Rhapsody and then to reposition right behind the mobs, and then you'll start right back up at the beginning of your skill rotation, and you'll have your Ember Claw finale back up when you do that. So that's the reason we do it. Again, not a super huge fan of it, and that's why I urge you more so than other classes to get used to it without having to actually um, stick to you know bread and butter combo all the time. Play a little bit more heads up as you get more comfortable with it so that you're not relying uh, on that skill itself. And at any given time, if you find that you need a little bit more spacing, you can always throw extra um, Twirling Rhapsody in there with R&B in between. And you can even do your uh, Fox Fair Fletch and Hazy Path too if you want to. So you could do all three at any given time when they're off cooldown if you needed just a couple seconds on a cooldown. You'll see that be a little more impactful when you have E or Z buff up because obviously you're working through the skills a little bit faster. Um, and it might just not make it quite as seamless as you'd hope for in that scenario, making you rely on that E, which is admittedly a bit lackluster. I do use it in plenty of situations for it, but like I said, the the overall rotation ends up evolving into uh, priority so that um, your Ember Claw finale is going to be priority number one. You're pretty much using Twirling Fox Flare every single cooldown on that six second. Uh, then you get the bigger uh, Frontal Guard guys, the Slash and Torrent, uh, both using uh, great damage output, uh, playing heads up with your Torrent to make sure if you're getting your three hits or your one hits that you play accordingly, and then always going back to prioritizing that Ember Claw finale. Um, just go ahead and use this to get used to it. You can see I did note the reposition and engage. Obviously, as we talked about, you can Fox Flare ambush at any point in the combo to get back behind the mobs. And uh, as I also said, you can just Twirling Rhapsody, Fox Flare Fletch into Twirling Rhapsody. You can do this all day long uh, if you want to. It, may, it does maintain Spirit Forge state as long as you throw the Fox Flare Fletch in between the Rhapsodies. Um, and it's really solid for repositioning. It's also nice, let's say, if um, you are on a set where you were about to use uh, your Ember Claw Slash. And again, the teleport is going to make us only use the third hit, but we want all three hits and I need to reposition. So coming off of my Twirling Fox Flare, rather than just go ahead and repositioning and only getting my third hit here, what I could choose to do instead is put the Twirling Rhapsody uh, Fox Flare Fletch in between so that I can reposition that way. So I'll Twirling Fox Flare, Rhapsody in between, and now I'm gonna get all three of my hits as back attacks. Uh, on my mobs there, which is pretty nice because the damage is really great on all three hits and who hates protected damage. So there you go for the skill rotation. I know it's a little bit more unconventional than what we normally see in these PvE guides, but that's just the nature of Awaken Megu. She performs insanely well. She's actually outperformed for me Succession Megu at Hex as far as raw trash loot is concerned. The difference being that it takes a lot more heads up play uh, than a standard just press keys, you know, six buttons and type uh, grind class. Um, so it's a little more nuanced than that, but it's a lot of fun to play. Uh, very engaging since you're paying attention and she has such a huge benefit getting additional critical hit damage and on on command back attacks through both Rhapsody and her Fox Flare ambush skills, uh, allowing her to reposition completely seamlessly and keep that Spirit Forge stance. So uh, that's going to be it for this video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to like it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos go live. I'm going to leave you guys out with a skill demonstration of me grinding at Hex so you can kind of see the, uh, the combat in action. If you have any questions or comments or anything, uh, be sure to drop those below. Uh, and that's going to be it. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and I will see you next time.